My name is Maya Dolinar. I'm from the so Slovenian Social Science Data Archives. And I'm here today to present to you, together with my colleague Gregor, how ADP has basically customized uh, the Dataverse application to follow its workflows and the services that we want to kind of promote in our, uh, in our archive. So just to say for, for the beginning, a few words about our archive, for those of you who do not know us, uh, Slovenian Social Science Data Archives. So ADP was established in 1997 as an organizational unit of the Social Sciences Research Institute at the Faculty of Social Sciences, University of Ljubljana. It is a national research infrastructure for social sciences, uh, whose main mission is basically to manage uh, data and data services in order to support research, education, and general well being. We're also a member of SESDA, so the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives, that is the umbrella organization of the European Social Science Data Archives. And we are basically involved in many European and national projects as well. So uh, to go into this presentation, um, the problem that we have or the situation behind is that we are currently providing access to our catalog through our webpage catalog and through our Nestar catalog. And both of these solutions are of course not ideal for our users since they do not have the functionalities or the services we want to offer to our designated communities and are also in the case of Nestar also becoming obsolete because the tool is not longer upgraded and supported. And for these reasons, we have been investigating in the last five plus years, uh, the possibilities of hosting our catalog in different applications. And as a result of this, Dataverse was identified as the best new option for distributing our curated catalog. This is the one that is quite currently hosted in our webpage and on Nestar, and to also provide additional services to our users. So this is the self-archiving option. So the both uh, versions of the catalog in one. Uh, we have now, so we have, of course, when we selected the Dataverse as our application that will host our future catalog, we have soon come across a huge problem that the default version, of course, uh, lacks many essential features that are important for our workflow and services. That is, for example, the multilingual user interface, because we want to, of course, have the possibility for our users to see everything in Slovenian and English. And then the implementation of says the metadata model and some ADP custom metadata fields, of course, incorporating the DDI controlled vocabularies and the else the keywords, and also some additional metadata fields on level of files. Uh, because we want to have a data, this dataverse as an instance also for like an entry point for deposits of studies, whether it be in the our curated catalog or in or in the self archiving options. We also want to have the, the possibility of having online deposit agreements and some ad adapted terms of use. And of course, also the option of doing online analysis, so something similar to what Nestor is offering and an option of easy download and preview of some data files. So the aim of this presentation today is basically to present to you our experience in customizing Dataverse to our needs based on our desired features and services and to basically identify some issues and workarounds that we had to make in order for our uh, installation of Dataverse to kind of follow our desired uh, needs. So quickly about Dataverse, this is an open source web application to share, preserve, cite, explore, and analyze research data. It facilitates making data available to others and allows you to replicate others' work with more ease. Uh, a Dataverse can consist of multiple virtual archives, so other Dataverses or catalogs or, or whatever you can mention them. And each Dataverse basically can contain data sets, which are basically studies that include descriptive metadata and data files. So it is quite easy for us to do two uh, separate catalogs, one for the curated version and one for the self-archiving version within our general overall uh, data catalog within Dataverse. Um, so since we want to use, as I said, the Dataverse installation as an entry point for deposit for our data producers, uh, we needed to implement an online deposit agreement into the default version of Dataverse. So when a registered user now clicks in the application, uh, the add new data set button, so this is the add new study button and wants to kind of deposit and put the study into the procedure of getting it included into our catalog. 
now a pop-up window appears with the deposit agreement and the fields are pre-filled with user information. As you can see here, you get the name and surname, the institution where the, the person is coming from and the email address. This is taken from the registration information of the user. Um, and of course, these uh, fields can be edited because we have also uh, examples in our workflow where the person who is depositing the study is not uh, always the signatory of the deposit agreement because he is just doing this in the name of somebody else. So we had this option also that to edit this information that are then stored in the back end. Uh, currently, we have this online deposit agreement implemented in Slovenian. So this is what you can see on the screen here, the screenshot. And of course, we will have to implement it as well in the English version. So the user can here read the agreed deposit conditions. So this is this part here uh, and has to, of course, agree with them by ticking the box here. Otherwise, he cannot proceed in making uh, the, the deposit of the study. So getting into the metadata study fields and uh, the possibility to upload the data sets. Um, they can also access general conditions. This is here and the uh, description of possibility of, uh, concerning the copyright of the individual data sets that we offer. And this is done through PDF, PDF appendices that then open in the separate window. If the user is the bearer of copyright and is kind of registered through, for example, the AAI that we offer as well, then we take uh, accepting these deposit uh, conditions and filling out this form here as sufficient for the online deposit agreement to be valid. In case it is filled out in the name of somebody else, then we will contact the person who is responsible for sign signing this depository agreement and we'll make uh, adjustments to that. Okay, this is this. And um, yeah, now I would like to give the word to my colleague who will explain to you some additional customization we made and uh, we will proceed from that. Good afternoon. So as already mentioned, one of the first requirements for Dataverse that we needed was to have a multi-language user interface. So we needed a Slovenian UI translation. We started working on it uh, around 2018 as a part of the Dataverse EU project, but uh, those translations were done by translating language properties files by hand. So those are quite difficult to do as there was no context provided. And of course, a certain word can have different meaning depending on context. So uh, in 2020, we updated to Dataverse version five and decided to use a web-based tool, Weblate, um, for further translations. Weblate is a great tool. It's, it has a very friendly user interface. It's very easy to use and it also provides context. So we imported our old translations into Weblate and updated what was missing for version 5.2 that we currently use. At the moment, we still need to revise our old translations and possibly update, update some of them. Uh, then another requirement was to follow the CESDA metadata model. So we incorporated DDI controlled vocabularies and ELS keywords and also added some ADP fields. Next slide, please. So our first idea was to use the CESDA vocabulary API service. We were testing it around uh, mid 2020, but uh, we found out that it wasn't working properly. So um, there was also a new CESDA Cosmos REST API in development. So we were waiting for that. In the meantime, in the meantime, we, we decided to develop our own middleware using Docker. So we wouldn't have to depend on external services. So middleware is, uh, is a script that obtains information from external vocabularies for front-end front -end plugin of Dataverse, which then shows topics or keywords from the vocabularies to the users. Next slide, please. So the script uses a dump of CESDA and ELS vocabularies in JSON format. It then reads those dump files and pro also provides autocomplete functionality that was written in Python. Um, by adding all those new metadata fields, we also encounter, encounter some issues with bootstrap layout, but we managed to resolve them. Then we also encountered another problem with big vocabularies. So um, with, we, we didn't have that problem with small vocabularies because if a user types in a text or a symbol, 
uh, the vocabulary is small, so um, there is no issue with uh, uh, visualization and the user can simply pick one or more terms from that small list. But if a list is big, then um, it can be too big to be properly shown on screen. So we also developed a scrollable list of those items. So it's then again, easy to pick the uh, chosen uh, items from the list. Then in late 2020, this is the Cosmos REST API service was finally launched. We updated Dataverse to use that new service. So it's now connected to the service for ELST keywords. Um, while it's playing around with all those new uh, new um, metadata blocks and fields, we also found out that there is no API to automatically update the database and the solar schema. Uh, that API was still in development, so it all had to be updated manually. So um, we also developed a procedure to create or update metadata blocks or fields as we require. Next slide, please. Um, we also um, created, well, developed um, options to pick um, one of the three CC licenses for each individual uploaded file. Um, there is also the option of restricted access to completely restrict it. Uh, there is also an option to define access conditions. This can be public use file, scientific use file, or secure use file. Then depending on the license and access conditions that we pick, an individual file is either open to download or restricted. So if a file is restricted, then user first has to request access. So if the, only if the request is granted, then user can download that file. Next slide, please. Um, another thing that we developed was um, additional metadata fields on the file level, for example, title of material, year, or authors. We found out that adding new metadata fields on file level required far more work than on the data set level. Uh, we, needed, we needed to add additional fields to the database, develop some new code in Java, and change some XHTML files. We also had to create corresponding solar indexes, but uh, we managed to do it. So now we have all those new fields. So that's about it from my side. So back to Maya. Thank you. So uh, as I told you at the start of this presentation, since uh, we were using Nestor so far, uh, we wanted to also find uh, a tool that would enable similar data curation as for example, Nestor Publisher does for the variable level metadata. So for Dataverse, we found this solution in the data curation tool plugin that is available as an external tool for Dataverse. And this tool allows data owners and curators to create and edit a variable level metadata for any tabular file in a data set. So you basically just need to upload a tabular data file in order to use this tool to kind of edit the variable level information. So the tools allows you to uh, view summary statistics about data, to add variable information, such as interview instruction or full question texts or notes or so on. You can also create variable groups and indicate whether a variable is weighted or not. And once you complete the editing and save back the file to Dataverse, all of these changes can be then downloaded as an XML file or exported to a code book, so the DDI 2.5. Um, in addition to that, we were also searching for a solution that would enable online data exploration and some basic online analysis. This is something that is a feature of Nestor, as you probably know, the, one, the ones who know Nestor and use it. So uh, we, de we decided to go with the Data Explorer plugin for now. This is also an ex external Dataverse tool. Uh, the, this tool has some similar functionalities uh, to the Nestor online analysis tool. It basically lists the variables in a tabular data file that allows searching, charting, and also cross-tabulation analysis. Here on the picture, you have an example of this cross-tabulation analysis done in a chart. So it's this, this kind of representation here, and you also then get uh, below it some summary statistics. Uh, we evaluated for this functionality, so online data exploration and analysis, also the two Ravens plugin that's available like, as an external plugin to Dataverse. This is basically a web application for tabular data exploration and statistical analysis with Zelig. However, we concluded based on our testing and analysis that this tool might be too complicated for our users to use. 
uh, it enables you to basically run some statistical models, even quite complex ones, to view summary statistics or to create and download a subset of uh, variable vectors and even more. But our users who use this option of online analysis are namely students, and we are sure that they will not be able to use this kind of complicated models systems. And um, the ones who actually use this kind of complex modeling or complex analysis are usually the users who download our data and then use some uh, desktop applications to analyze their data. So that's why we decided to not go with the two Ravens plugin, but to get just a simple data explorer option for now. So we also incorporated in our Dataverse instance, the Dataverse file previewers plugin. This is also, this is a plugin that was originally developed by the qualitative data repository and confirms also to the Dataverse external tools interface. And this is a set of tools that basically display, display the content of files. So this includes audio, HTML, images, PDF text, video, uh, tabular data, I know even spreadsheets. It basically allows you to view all these kinds of data sets without uh, downloading them. So the previewer is available through the external tools button on data set pages. However, the newer versions that we are also using also use previewers for embedded display on data file pages. And of course the user has to have rights to pre preview the content of a data file. So if the data file is restricted, it is this some sort of a restricted content, a user must have permission of course to view this relevant data set version or download the data the relevant data file so here in the uh, slide you can see this is the the part where where you have the table of the data files and you can see here is a short preview of what this uh, individual data file is so this you have the first page of a pdf and here where is the picture you have basically the picture that you can see and then when you click on the explore, this is the explore button, you can either view image or in case of a PDF, you would see here the, the read the document option. So when you click that, a new window opens and this, this kind of uh, image appears when you can see the name of the file, where it's from, who is the author, um, and you can download it or close preview. And then you can also preview the individual pages of a PDF, for example. And here in the case of a picture, it would be just a picture. So to conclude, um, in the near future, we will be transferring our curated catalog to our customized Dataverse and will enable a self-archiving service to our users as well. Uh, we're basically now in the process of integrating our existing data creation tools and services for long-term storage with Dataverse and to basically integrate Dataverse into fully into our workflow. Uh, we are, have still not finished, though, with the customization work on Dataverse. Uh, we really need full multilinguality, meaning that we will need to have a possibility to publish studies in Slovenian and English. So a solution to do so will need to be developed in the future, quite uh, near future. And this, however, also depends on the future developments within Dataverse, within the SESDA community and support from outside that we are counting on getting in, in here as well. Uh, we will also need to adapt the OIA PMH export for the SESDA data catalog. Some of the solutions have already been made by other SPs that we are looking at right now, and we will see what we can use to adapt to our situation, what will work best for us. And then, of course, we need to update also the DDI 2.5 export that comes from the Dataverse. Uh, currently, there is this default version of the DDI 2.5 that does not include controlled vocabularies and the listing that we are searching for. So we will need to adapt that to our needs as well. Uh, we will also be testing and evalu evaluating additional plugins that we found as potentially useful in our work. For example, we have on our checklist whole tail. This is a tool that enables researchers to analyze data using popular tools uh, that include Jupyter or RStudio with basically the ultimate goal for, uh, to support publishing reproducible research packages. And then another tool is Amnesia, uh, as you, many of you probably know this tool. This is a flexible data anonymization tool that transforms relational and transactional databases to data sets where formal privacy guarantees hold. Um, 
And this tool also employs um, visualization tools and supportive mechanisms to really allow even non-expert users to anonymize relational and object relational data. And another tool that I found interesting and I, it's worth exploring in future is also the uh, Algidea uh, data search tool. Uh, this and I enables researchers to use a Google Sheets uh, add-on to search for Dataverse installations, CSV data, and then basically import that data into a sheet where they can analyze it uh, further on. So yes, this is all from our side. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention. And if there are any questions or comments, uh, we are happy to answer them.